All right, guys, let's now take uh, a closer look at question nine that is based on Euclidean geometry. It is from the metric paper of 2022, paper two to be exact. Without any waste of time, let's go and check it out. Now, question nine reads as follows. 9.1 says in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. OD bisects chord AB. Okay. So now they say prove the theorem that states that the line from the center of the circle that bisects the chord is perpendicular to the chord. That is, we want you to prove that OD is perpendicular to the line AB. Okay, cool. Now, the other way of saying that is if you had the um, angles here at um, the point where the line OD meets the chord AB, um, we just wanted to show that D1 and angle D2 are both going to be equal to 90 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do here is ask the examiner to allow me to construct two triangles here. And then I'm going to try and prove to you that those two triangles are exactly identical. When we say they are identical, we mean like they are twins. And the mathematical term for that is we want you to prove that they are what we would refer to as congruent. Okay, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. So I'll ask them to allow me to construct the radius OA and the radius OB. Okay, so I'm going to say this. Given, what are we given? We are given a uh, circle, okay, with center O and uh, OD with chord AB such that AD equals to DB. Okay, now, required to prove, we are required to prove that OD is perpendicular to AB, or the other way of saying that is we are required to prove that angle D1 equals to angle D2, they're both equal to 90 degrees. Now, let's, let's, let's prove it, let's prove it, proof. Okay, proof. Uh, I'll start by asking them to construct radii OA and OB, just asking them to let me draw OA and OB to make two radii. So I'm going to prove that those two triangles, the triangle ODA and the triangle ODB are exactly identical. The one on the left is the same as the one on the right hand side. And I think you will agree with me that they should be uh, because OA is a radius, OB is a radius, AD equals to DB that was given and OD is a common side. So this is it's very simple. Okay, so I'll say, uh, I think I'm quickly running out of space there. Um, in those two triangles, in triangle O, D, A, and O, D, B, we need three things that are the same. Okay, I'll finish off here. Uh, I'll say O, A equals to O, B because they're both radii. That's the reason. It's a radius and a radius, they're equal. And then uh, we were told that um, O, D, is common to both of them. So that's another thing that is the same. And lastly, we're told that AD is equal to DB. Okay, they're equal. This information was given to us. We're told that they're equal because they said that the point D bisects uh, the, 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 that particular chord. Okay, therefore, the triangles are congruent. You always try and find three things that are equal here. Uh, therefore, triangle ODA is congruent to triangle ODB. And the reason for this is side, side, side. Okay, therefore, angle D1 will be equal to angle D2 since there are angles in two triangles that are congruent. Okay, for those angles, they will be equal. Since those two triangles are exactly identical, it means the angle on the left hand side in the first triangle, this angle here, will be the same as the angle in the second triangle, which is the angle D2. But those have uh, a relationship. When you add them, they should be giving you 180 because the angles on a straight line. But D1 plus D2 equals to 180. Okay, why? Because they are angles on a straight line. Okay, now that means you can say, therefore, they, they, for them to be equal and still add to 180, it means they both have to be uh, 90 degrees. Equals to D2 equals to 90 degrees. 
and then therefore we've proved what we wanted to prove. Okay, that's what we wanted to prove, they're equal. Okay, then we can of course phrase it by saying therefore um, if angle D1 equals to angle D2 equals to 90 degrees, you may say therefore uh, OD is perpendicular to AB, which is what they required us uh, to prove. Okay. Now, moving on to the next question, 9.2. They say here in the diagram, E, B, F, S, and P are points in a circle centered at O. Okay, G, B is a tangent to the circle at B. F, E is produced to meet the tangent at G. O, T is drawn such that T is a midpoint of um, E, F. Okay, G, O, and B, O are drawn. B, S is drawn through T. PS is parallel to GF. It's very powerful. Okay, one line is parallel to another line. I think that's the key thing that they gave us. Key things that they gave us is this one is the tangent. Okay, that's very important. And then the th second thing they gave us is that uh, this here is parallel to the line at the top. Okay, very important for you to keep note of that. And maybe the other thing is that this point here is the midpoint of EF. And that will make OB to also be a radius. So there's a lot of very interesting things that are going on here that we have to keep uh, note of. Okay. Now, what do we have to do here? They want us to prove giving reasons that OTBG is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, cyclic quad. OTBG is a cyclic quad. So let's look at it. OTBG. So O is here. T is here. B is there. And then G is all the way over there. Okay, cool. Right, so we want to prove that that thing is a stately quad. How do you prove that something is a stately quad? You aim for uh, one of three things. Okay, you can either prove that opposite angles add up to 180, or you can prove that there is a yeah, you prove that in that quad the angles that are opposite add up to 180 degrees, or you prove that um, there's an exterior angle of some sort um, that is going to give us uh, a same angle value as the one that is inside to prove that those are equal. Or lastly, you prove that you've got uh, a bow tie kind of like a relationship, which is like converse angles on the same segment happening. If this is equal to that, and then that means you'll be looking at a stately quad. And that's what I'm going to go for. That's what I'm going to go for. Now, if you look closely, um, if I draw this diagonal here, okay? In fact, maybe let me not use that color for this one so that you guys can view this much better. Um, if I look at the quad inside, the quad inside the circle, I just uh, drew it in yellow. Um, these two are equal. That means using the theorem we just proved now, the angle there at point T should be 90 degrees because the angle that you're going to have when you've got the line from the center to the midpoint of a chord will be 90 degrees. And it's all thanks to the theorem we just spoke about. So I'm going to say angle OTE is 90 because a line from center bisects chord will always be perpendicular to a chord. Okay, so angle OTE is 90 degrees. Why is OT equals to 90 degrees? Because a line from center, okay, to midpoint. Line from center to midpoint of chord, okay, will bisect the chord at 90 degrees. Very important. Right. Now, the next one is the 90 degrees at the bottom. Which one is that? So I've given you 90. I'm going to give you 90 now in the other corner, which is here at point B. So I'm going to say to you, oh, well, but then that's not all. Um, BG is perpendicular to OB, so which means OBG is 90 as well, okay, uh, for a different reason. So OBG is 90, and the reason for that is because a radius is perpendicular to a tangent. Okay, now therefore, what are we sitting with now? If you look back, you are now looking at this situation. The, if you look at it in terms of the bow tie relationship I was talking about, you're looking at something that looks like this, and then it goes here, and then it goes all the way there. But it has 90s here in these corners. Okay, note the drawing is a bit smaller, but there's a 90 here. And there's another 90 here at T. This is where T is located, and this is where B is located. So these two are giving the 90s. And because they satisfy the story of angles on the same segment, I'll then say they actually are supposed to be on a slightly quad. So the whole thing is a slightly quad. So I'll say, therefore... OTBG is a slightly quad. Why is it a slightly quad? We always need a reason because um, converse of angles on the same segment, okay, on same segment uh, equal. 
since those angles are equal and they satisfy that relationship of angles to the same segment, we can claim that those are actually going to be uh, creating a cyclic quad. Okay, cool. Now, the last one says we need to show now that angle GOB is equal to angle S. Now, GOB is equal to angle S. This is where a lot of rules fall off for a lot of uh, some of you guys because you're thinking uh, just because this was not a cyclic quad originally, you can't use the properties of a cyclic quad. We have proved that it's a cyclic quad, so you can start treating it as one. Okay? So GOB, the angle that's talking about. So I'm gonna just remove what I have so that we can have like some time and space to talk about some of these things. So GOB that's talking about, what do they want? GOB is the angle that you have here. They want me to show that angle between point B here and O. So that's the angle they want. They want me to show that that angle is the same. This angle here is the same as the angle S at the top. Okay, where is angle S at the top is the same as this one over here. Okay, I want to show that this is the same as this. All right. But now what I'm going to do here is acknowledge the fact that if I'm looking at this cyclic quad, this cyclic quad we spoke about, we just proved it now. Okay, I can claim that I've got angles in the same segment on the cyclic quad and figure out the value of this angle in that one corner there. All right. So the angle here, this angle here at point T but inside has the same value as the angle here at O, the one that I'm trying to talk about. But that very same angle at point T has a, an F relationship, okay? This is T. This angle here that I'm talking about, okay, which goes to G, it goes to G and goes to B, has the same relationship as uh, S because they're actually equal to each other because they are between uh, parallel lines. They form what is called corresponding angles. So I'm going to first of all argue that the angle at O is equal to the angle at T because the angles on the same segment of that cyclic quad. And then I'm going to argue that the angle T is the same as the angle S because they are corresponding angles. Therefore, S and O are also going to be equal to each other. So that's how I'm actually going to lay my argument. Okay, so let's, let's have fun. Okay, how am I going to do that? I'm going to say, okay, well, angle, the angle at T, the angle that is lying at point T, very important for you to make note of it. Uh, is uh, going to be the following. Let's just say the angle, uh, which is angle uh, GOB that they want you to talk about is equals to the angle GTB. Okay, GTB. Why are they equal? Because they are angles on same segment of the cyclic quad we proved. Angles on same segment. Okay, and then, but... The angle GTB we're talking about is also equal to angle S, but angle S is also equal to angle GTB. Why is this equal to GTB? Uh, it's because those are corresponding angles and they are possible because of the fact that we've got the line GF being parallel to the line PS. Therefore, these are also going to be equal to each other because they are equal to uh, the same thing. So this is how you would actually find a solution to trying and improving these angles that we have over here.